time. 
crazy, I said. I was positive I'd given out all the candy on the night before, unless someone had broken in and reverse and trick-or-treated me. The bowl couldn't be full. But as mystifying as it was, I had to finish getting ready for work. A few minutes later, when I checked up on the world via my phone, I nearly choked on my toothpaste. All the news articles were the same as yesterday. All my messages do. Finally, I noticed the date. It was October 31st again. It felt surreal. Had I completely dreamed up the previous day? None of my memories had the hazy qualities of dreams, but it seemed the likeliest explanation. Of course, I soon discovered I was wrong. Everyone in town had the same story. Most people shrugged it off, but when October 31st came again the next day, no one was shrugging. We began to keep track. October 32nd became the 33rd, then the 34th, and so on. It's been two years now, but technically, every day is October 31st. Meanwhile, the air shimmers at the edge of town, forming an impassable barrier. We're trapped in a bubble of the past, and the world outside has apparently forgotten us. It's not even a true time loop, because not everything resets. People have died, supplies are running low, and food is scarce. Except for the candy. The candy always resets. From what we can tell, the children here loved Halloween so much, they wanted it to be every day, and somehow their wish came true. They claim they don't know how to fix things, but I'm not sure they would if they could. They still go trick-or-treating every night. They are still growing, though. At first, we thought this was good and October would finally end once they started maturing. Then last night, a different thought struck me. If the children's love for Halloween led to this, what will happen when they're old enough to embrace the scarier side of the holiday? Last night was also the first time I saw monstrous shapes lumbering through the darkness outside, just beyond the edge of my vision. And this morning, there was a bloody axe in my yard. So far, Halloween has been about candy and costumes, but not for much longer. Interesting. stay with 
rules were. If it snows on Halloween, every trick or treater wearing a mask will be asked to take it off before they can get candy. If you are wearing a mask, you must take it off before taking any candy. If someone refuses to take off their mask, do not offer them candy and do not speak to them. We didn't know the why behind the rules, but honestly, I didn't care. Sherry was the only one of us wearing a mask after all. Sucks to be you, Sherry, I joked. Hope that giant furball of a mask is easy to take on and off. Yeah, Cher, Michaela and I will leave you behind if you aren't fast enough, Ashley said with a laugh. Very funny, guys. The good news was that we were staying at Ashley's house for the night, and her mom wasn't much of a nagging type of mom. So I figured she'd give us a quick reminder of the rules as we went out the door, and that would be it. My mom, on the other hand, was definitely a nagging type of mom. I could sense her phone call before my cell phone even rang. Yes, mom, I said as soon as I answered, not letting her get a word in. Sherry's the only one wearing a mask, and she knows to take it off before getting candy. We won't talk to anyone who doesn't take their mask off, blah blah blah. Love you, and see you tomorrow. I hung up and giggled. Parents, am I right? After one last look at our costumes to make sure they were perfect, we tumbled out the front door and into the snowy neighborhood. Our plan was to start at the house next door and work our way around the neighborhood as the night got darker. The inner streets had some seriously creepy looking houses and we wanted to hit those when it was good and dark out for maximum creep factor. Do you think Josh and the guys will be out? Ashley asked as we headed up the walkway to the nearest house. She had an obvious crush on Josh, but swore up and down that she didn't. No idea, Ash, I said as I rang the doorbell. Trick or treat. As the night went on, Sherry got pretty quick at ripping her mask off her head the second she was asked. I had to give it to her because she put it back on every time. I know the mask completed the werewolf costume, but I probably would have just left it off after the fourth or fifth house. Just before nine o'clock, we hit the last house in the neighborhood. They were known to give out two full-size candy bars at the end of the night just to get rid of them. We ran past a group of kids who were just leaving and bounded up the steps. Trick or treat. What great costumes. Go ahead and take two bars if you'd like, the woman at the door said. But you two will have to take off your masks first. Two. I looked over at Sherry and saw another kid standing next to her. He was dressed as a scarecrow with a burlap sack over his head. The mouth was crookedly stitched on and the eye holes were jaggedly cut. I shivered and looked away. Just some kid trying to get their last bit of candy like we were before the neighborhood shut off their porch lights and turned in for the night. I reached into the plastic pumpkin the woman was holding out and grabbed a Twix and a Milky Way. I looked over at Sherry, who was pulling off her mask. The scarecrow stood still next to her, 
so much for